Why yep. would you tell a new trader to just jump right into micros versus minis? When you deal with some of the new guys, how do you guide them there? So talk to mm -hmm. us about your approach to passing combines. Do you go hard, try to pass them quickly? Do you trade them the same as your funded accounts? What's your opinion on that? So the initial balance for everybody that doesn't know is the first hour of trading, correct? 9.30 mm -hmm. to 10.30 yep. Eastern time. Yep. So you set a high and a low and you're using those as kind of like your range for the day where you'll look for reversals off of that range. Will you ever oh. like look for break and retest or continuation? I'm a firm believer in picking one, maybe two instruments that you want to trade. Don't spread yourself across, right? I'm a firm believer in that because if you pick one or two, you really start to learn how it moves and you get used to the swings, the price action, and you learn it quicker. You've done a lot of research on these firms and you've um, done, you know, some serious digging and some people mm -hmm. don't do that. So any advice to like the new traders on maybe what companies or how to know who to trust? What's up traders? Welcome back to the day trading show. Today, I'm sitting down with Joey Morgan. Joey is a futures trader. He's been trading futures for about four years. He's a big top step guy. You're going to learn all about him and his strategy today. We talk about how he uses the initial balance, the trading of the first hour of the day, the long or short bias that he favors and everything in between. You're going to love it. There's a ton of, like I said, very concise, valuable talking points that he and I hit. So make sure you're really focused on this episode. I had probably 10 or 15 notes from this one. So you're going to love it. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of our future episodes. Thank you to Joey. Thank you to our sponsors. And now let's get into the conversation. The sponsor of today's episode is Top One Trader. If you've been a listener, you know Top One has been a sponsor for a while, and that's because they continue to deliver. And there's two factors that I think separate them from all the other CFD prop firms out there right now. Now, they are a top 30 firm, and if you look at all of the other top 30 firms, this is not happening anywhere else. Number one, payouts in an hour or less, as fast as eight minutes. It's crazy. It's like almost unbelievable. And also customer service that they actually answer your question when you hit the live chat in as quick as 60 seconds. Some of these firms, we won't mention names, take two weeks to get back to you. So when it comes to an industry that is very competitive, where you can get funded with so many different firms, you've got to find those standout features. All the challenges are basically the same price. All of the rules are basically the same. But where top one separates themselves, like I said, is in payout speed and reliability and customer service. So if you're looking to get funded with CFDs, check out top one trader, use the link down below or flying in above the screen. That'll save you some money. The code is ASFX. That's going to save you 30%. We appreciate them for being a sponsor. Now let's get back to the show. Welcome back, traders. We've got the Black Shirt Boys on the call today. Joey Morgan's in the house for a very special episode. Joey, it's good to meet you, man. Thanks for being here. Awesome. Yes. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm really grateful for you, uh, not only coming on the show, bro, but the content that you're putting out. I agree with a lot of the messages that you push. So I was like, got to get this guy on the show. You know, dude, what I'm trying to do, and I think my listeners kind of get this, is like I'm trying to get to guys like I, this is what I want to see. I want to see your office. I want to see your trade setup, and I want to hear you talk about trading. I don't care about anything else that you have going on, to be honest. I'm yeah. glad that you're married. I'm glad that you're having a great, but that's not what the audience or me want to hear. So you kind of fit right up that alley, Joey. You're pushing good content. Your tweets are good. Your videos are good. So I hope uh, our listeners will enjoy the episode and then go check you out. Make sure they're subscribed to your channel. I'm going to put all the links down in the description for you, but let's get into it, bro. I want to know a little bit about you. Tell me, I know you just got married this year, so congratulations on that. Thank you. you. Lived yeah. in the Midwest most of your life, you said, so you're a Missouri mm -hmm. guy, which is awesome. What got you into trading? Because I'm sure there's probably not a lot of traders out there. Am I correct? Yeah, there's not very many, not not in my area, at least. Um, it's a funny story, actually. So I, I come from a, a marketing background um, where I already managed a lot of money uh, for a lot of clients. I spent a lot of money on ad spend north of six figures in marketing cool. alone. And so I kind of became desensitized to the P and L swings, right. Yeah. When you're dealing with, when you're dealing with money. And so, um, I came across another, another YouTuber, uh, back in the day that was uh, swing trading stocks. And, um, so that kind of got me into trading. And so I, I, I started trading stocks, but I really got into trading futures during the COVID era, which mm. was probably the worst time <laughs> to start trading futures. What brought you to futures at that volatility. time? Anything specific? Uh, no, just, uh, again, another, another, saw another YouTuber trading futures. Like I, I really just saw other people doing it. And I was like, man, like this looks interesting. I'm already kind of used to like money and the P and L swings and, and, and managing that sort of thing. And so I wanted to give it a try and uh, I turned out, I loved it and got, got hooked into it and I've done it ever since. 
Nice. That's awesome. What about futures really stuck out to you compared to what you were doing with stocks is like, oh, I think I can make this work. Was there any type of like moment where you were like, oh, I like this market a lot more? Um, I liked the volatility. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of the volatility in the futures market. Um, I, some people call me a psycho because I like to trade the NASDAQ. I'm a big NASDAQ guy, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is. But yeah, the volatility is what brought me to the, to the, to the futures market and um, being able to trade it after hours too. Like if I was busy during the day, if I wanted to trade after hours, I could, it was available yep. for me. Um, yep. And so that kind of really attracted me to it. That's awesome. Did you go to college for finance? Did you do anything before the marketing degree that had to do, or the marketing job before the, uh, before like that had to do with finance before that? Or no, it was like trading the first intro into finance for you. Trading was the first intro into finance. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. No college degree in finance, just saw people doing it. And I was like, I really want to try this, got into it and just ended up loving it. That's awesome. With the uh, the marketing clients, you reminded me, I uh, I interviewed Kyle. He goes by Jade Cap. I'm sure you know who he is on the internet. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's what he used to do. He had a job where he was managing large projects that required large amounts of capital. And he says that he thinks that some of that previous career dealing with big numbers transitioned well into trading. I would say the same yep. thing for like guys like Rips and Nick on Top Step, those guys too. Mm -hmm. I know you know them. So very, yep. very similar that you can see people that have done stuff in one area of life, seen some serious cash, seen some success, it can be translated over into trading, which is super cool. Um, yeah, you can. mentioned NASDAQ. Talk to us mm -hmm. about how you trade. I'd like to learn a little bit more about that because you do, like I said, you do a really good job of putting out the content that shows what you do. So let's get into that today. I think that would be really valuable for the audience. So what time of day, why NASDAQ? Let's get into that if yeah. we can. Yeah, so uh, I trade the New York Open. Um, okay. and, uh, I, as far as the NASDAQ goes, like, I love the volatility of the NASDAQ. It's a mover. Um, I, I have dabbled in the ES a little bit. I, I just never, I never really was able to find my footing with the ES and, and how it moves. I've always just been with the NASDAQ. And so I'm used to that kind of, uh, the mood swings that the, the NASDAQ can have. Um, yep. but you know, I've always been attracted to the volatility and how it moves and, uh, micros have been my best friend on, on trade NASDAQ. You know, I, I, I have traded minis on NASDAQ before and I always gotten smoked, uh, trading minis. And, um, ever since I started trading micros, I really saw a change in how I trade my mentality and how I trade my emotions overall, how I manage my positions in general, um, trading micros. And so that's how, I, you know, that's just kind of the direction I took with NASDAQ. When you let's go into that. Cause I think a lot of people yeah. come into this and they think, oh, minis are amazing. If I could just get a couple of minis on, I can make a ton of money. Of course, they're not looking at the downside, the risk side, right? Which is right. all of us when we're new, but you're now yeah. kind of, I've seen you tweet about this. I think you even replied to me talking about how like micros are the thing, especially as volatility has increased. Look at the last two weeks before we're filming this, right? Why yep. would you tell a new trader to just jump right into micros versus minis? When you deal with some of the new guys, how do you guide them there? Yeah. Um, well, the minis, you have large P and L swings, right? I mean, a, a 50 point move on one mini, right? That's a thousand bucks. Right. And so it's like when you're new to trading, seeing those large P and L swings can get to you a little bit. I mean, you're not yeah. used to seeing those types of numbers and those types of P and L swings. And so really the best thing that I would say for a new trader is like, just, it's okay to start small and then just build up and build up and build up using the micros. You can scale into position. You can still have $500,000 days trading micros, right? I don't think a oh, lot yeah. of people understand that. And, and you know, you can, it, micros allows you to take those, you know, 50 point, you know, drawdowns without getting too uh, emotional over it, right? And it allows you to, if you get into a winning trade, then you can start scaling into a position and that allows you to have those $500,000 days or whatever it may right. be with tra just trading micros. Right. Makes sense. When you, uh, are working with other traders, do you find that like a lot of people are starting to come around to this? Or do you think it's still some of the, something that people are a little resistant to where they're like, dude, no, I need more position size. Cause I find I got guys that are like almost resistant to the micros. They're like, oh, the commissions are too high. Or yeah. I don't know, I won't be able to do the math in my head fast enough. And it's like, yeah, but aren't those like two kind of lame excuses? You know what I mean? When you're talking about protecting yeah. your capital. Yeah, they are. And I think that comes from a place where people try to rush the process. They're just, yeah. they're really trying to build that account as quickly as possible. Um, I, I'm starting to see more and more people come around to trade micros. Uh, I, you know, I posted a YouTube video talking about micros and in my comment section, a lot of people um, were talking about how they switched to micros and it's been like the best thing for their trading, right? And so I think more and more people are starting to come around to the idea of trading micros and slowly building that account because it's all about longevity, right? We're in this to have longevity. So 
to hold our account. We want to hold our account as long as possible. Right. And so micros allow us to do that. I think when more and more people start to see that and see how that can shift their trading more, I think they're going to start adapting to micros more so. I think you're right. And I think if you look at like even the volume on top step and some of these guys that are tracking that they're seeing majority of people are trading micros, you know, which yep. hopefully that'll continue to grow. When you got into futures back in COVID times, did you jump right in with prop firms or were you trading your own capital first? I, I jumped right into prop firms. Um, top nice. step was actually the first uh, prop firm I, I had jumped into and I've been with them ever since. Nice. Have you tried other firms or are you just a top step through and through? Yeah, I've tried other firms. Uh, I just was I wasn't a fan of like the rules of some other firms and how they how they do things. And so I really They're appreciate tricky, how. Huh? Yeah, they are tricky. Yeah, they can be very very tricky. You gotta be careful. Um, I, I was you were gonna say you appreciate Top Step and how they. Yeah, I appreciate Top Step and like how they, um, how their rules are set up, their payout structure is set up, their customer support. Like they've always been really really good. If things go wrong, they're always, they've always been good at making things right and. I can, I've always had the feeling they take care of traders and that they, they want their traders to succeed. And I've always had that feeling. And so that's why I've just been with them ever since. And it's cool. Like some of these firms, you don't know the CEO, you don't get to right. talk and be MPs on stream every day. He did the podcast yep. with me. Like he's out on Twitter, tweeting at people, like he's in the mix, yep. which I think is another cool thing. I, I work with a, a CFD prop firm similar, but for Forex stuff. And they do the same mm -hmm. thing. Like, I think the CEO has got to be forward facing in this industry now. Uh, yep. do you like, are you full prop firm now, or do you do any personal capital trading? I do have a personal account. I just don't ever really trade it. I mean, right yeah. now I'm just trading prop firms. I, they're available. I think, you know, I don't feel like I have a reason to really trade my personal. Um, if yeah. I have a prop firm available to trade, so I've just really been putting my focus on prop firms. Hey traders, it's Austin from the future. Really quick before we continue with the video, I just want to say something that you're probably all thinking trading courses are not the best way to learn how to trade. I totally agree with that. That's why we decided about a year and a half ago to unleash on the trading industry something that most people don't normally do. We started our own in-house live trading rooms, our in-house live streaming platform. It's called ASFX TV. There's a link for a seven day free trial down in the description to this video. It's probably flying in above my head too. We want you to come see the information that we talk about in our YouTube videos, in our courses. I wanna show you that in the live market. Cause again, it's one thing to just watch a video course and then say, oh, good luck, you're on your own now. It's another thing to actually bring people in, show them those strategies in a video course and then show them how it's applied in the live market. Now, with ASFX TV, you don't have to be there live. Everything is recorded and stored for you if you're working or you're busy and you miss something. But we also have a live chat feature. So if you can be there live, you can ask questions. You can interact with our streamers. All of our streamers are vetted. All of them have proven track records. All of them have been funded, been paid out, the whole nine yards. So you're really going to be learning from people who have more experience than you, which is in my opinion, the most important thing when you're learning how to trade, it's that you get around people with more experience than you. So it's a seven day free trial, then it's 10 bucks a month. You really can't afford to pass on this. So if you are not subscribed to ASFX TV, use the link down below. Now let's get back to the video. Nice. You see, uh, I'm sure because you're on Twitter and you're in the mix like me, there's always some drama yeah. going on between the guys always. that were at Top Step <laughs> and this firm is better than that firm. What do you what yep. do you think of that? Like how, when you look at the landscape of this right now, because it's very interesting, you have guys that promote prop firms, you have guys that trade and don't promote things. Then there's like guys that do kind of both. You got any, I know you have some strong opinions on on these uh, these things. Got anything you'd like to share? Maybe for like some of our listeners that are uh, not sure who to trust. You know, I like talking to guys yeah. like you that you clearly in some of your YouTube videos, you've done a lot of research on these firms and you've yeah. done, you know, some serious digging and some people mm -hmm. don't do that. So any advice to like the new traders on maybe what companies or how to know who to trust, not necessarily to bad mouth or to, if we need to, we yeah. should talk people. If, if, if they deserve it, they deserve <laughs> it. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. No, I think uh, in the property space, competition is good for the, for the industry, right? Because I mean, it, it forces people to, it forces firms to adapt and to, to get better in the long term. You know what I mean? But yeah. um, as far as like, you know, choosing prop firms, I think it's important just to take a step back. Because I think to put it this way, a lot of traders look for that shiny object, right? That's like very attractive. That they, that they think can help them make a lot of money. For example, like the trading of multiple, multiple, multiple accounts, right? It's a, it's a shiny object. People look at that and think, oh, wow, like I can go make, you know, a thousand bucks on 20 accounts and this $20,000 payday, right? It's it's a shiny object, but that blinds them from looking at like 
how the profit firm is operated, the customer support, the payout structure, the rules, like it really blinds them to some of those things. I think it's important for traders to take a step back and look at the prof firm as a whole, not just at what they may offer you that's beneficial to you, but look at them as a whole. You know, how long have they been in the industry? Who, I mean, where did they come from? How, what kind of backing do they have? Is their CEO uh, in the public? Is, is he a trader? Did he come from a trading background, right? You know, there's a lot of things to look at in a prof firm that I think traders should pay attention to. And at, at the end of the day, it's like, go with a prof firm that's, that best suits you as a trader that you think is it follows your style of trading, right? Um, but take a step back from the shiny objects, really pay attention to who you're going with and, and go from there. Great advice. And it is, it's, yeah. and like you said, competition is good because it'll make it yeah. so that the firms get cheaper. The challenges maybe get a little easier, things like that, because they want to take market share from the other firms. Yep. But just because it's good, there's a saying, it's too good to be true. You know, you need to pay mm -hmm. attention to those things. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. When I see like Apex and some of the the firms run these massive sales, I'm like, God, I, I as a business guy, I'm like, are they hurting or are they capitalizing on people? Like last week, for example, I think Apex ran a big sale when the volatility picked up. And in my head, I'm like, well, either they are going to need to pay a bunch of people out so they need money or and or mm -hmm. they got a bunch of people that blew accounts and they want to have them keep by and not go to a different firm. You know, the yeah. sales 80% off. It's insane all the time. 80%, yeah. 80%, 80%, you know, it's crazy. I have a problem with that. Actually. I have a okay, big problem me. with that. Yeah. Cause you know, coming from a, mar a marketing background, right. I, I pay attention to these things and the continuous sale makes you want to continue a sale. When you, when you're sitting here telling people it's going to expire, it's going to expire. Like we all know it's going to go up the next day. Like it, it's, <laughs> there, there is no fooling people. No, like, I mean, you may be fooling some people, but you're not fooling me. Right. I mean, right. You, I know it's going to expire on Tuesday and then it's going to be right back up on Wednesday. Like it's yep. this one <laughs> will expire, it. but you're going to have another sale with a yeah. different name with the same discount on Thursday. Yes. Exactly. You know, and exactly. I think it, it does bring up that good, like a really good point. Cause you're a marketing guy and so am I. So like we, we probably share similar beliefs in some things. Like if you treat your audience, like they're stupid, they will stop buying from you. Like they're yeah, not sure. stupid. Yes. No. Like people are not dumb. Like you just said, people mm -hmm. put two and two together and go, okay, they're running sales every week. Like, is yep. that the sale price or is that the regular price? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then what do you do from a business perspective? Like you've probably been on the side with your marketing thing where you were a part of teams where people wanted to run sales all the time. Well, you run sales all the time. You condition the buyer to never buy unless there is a sale. And now you're right. losing your overall value of the number you were trying to make per mm -hmm. sale. So you yeah, it's got a, a cascading effect. Yep. You become a discount you become, from you like Costco. Yeah, yeah yep. exactly. Pretty much. Yeah. And so, also, I mean, I'm a firm believer and you pay for what you get. So it's, me too. Yeah. So I was actually talking to my brother-in-law about this. He's in real estate. And in real estate now, they have this thing where the NAR got a lawsuit and they have to now disclose the percentages of how much the uh, buyer and seller agent are going to make and you have to sign a form. Well, you know what he said? He was like, if I lose sales to people that offer 1% when I want 3%, fine. I don't want to work with somebody that wants to budget this and try to get the budget thing because like I know what I'm worth. And I was like, exactly. That's the right way you got to do yeah. it because people like you and me, people that have been around, you know, I think if you're, it comes with age and, and also experience too, but you're like, dude, nothing good comes cheap, right? You no. know, have you ever heard of the golden triangle or the triad? It's good, fast, and cheap. You can't have okay. all three. Yeah. You can only right. have good and fast, fast and cheap. It won't be good though. So you can never have all three. You can never have good, fast, and cheap. And I think that's yep. a good way to live life. Like, it's like, it's 100%. true. Well, what fits that? You know, comments, tell me below. What is good, fast, and cheap? <laughs> and don't say me in bed, all right? Because that's not the answer. <laughs> Um, all right, Joey. So let's talk strategy a little bit now that we're, yeah. uh, we're, we're, we've got some, I understand a little bit more about how you're seeing the business of prop firms and stuff like that. First, before I go into the strategy, when you're talking to some of the new guys, cause I see you get a lot of comments on your YouTube videos from seems like some more newer and experienced guys. Do you tell everybody demo first, or do you tell everybody buy a prop firm challenge and figure it out? What's your opinion on this? I, I recommend going prop firm. Um, and the reason why is because on a demo account, you don't have the emotional attachment to a losing trade. Whereas like sure. if you pay, if you pay for a prop firm, you have a little bit of an emotional attachment because you paid for that account, right? It may not right. be, you know, money, actual real money in the account, but you paid right. for the account. Right. And so you have something to lose. And I feel like if you're in a position where you have something to lose, it forces you to think a little more clearly and adapt and um, actually try to become a good trader in that account, so to speak. Yeah, yeah I think that's a good answer because that's kind of, yeah. I think what most people should probably try, like there's nothing to lose from trying the prop firm for 50 bucks or a hundred bucks, no. whatever you're going to, it's no. much better than a demo account. I agree. I yep. agree. 
So tell me about your strategy, Joey, because I've seen some videos and mm -hmm. I – don't want to make assumptions about the way that you trade. So when someone asks you, Joey, you know, you've been looking at markets for a couple of years now, what's your go-to trade? What's your favorite trade? How do you describe that? Yeah, it'd be the initial balance of failed auctions or a continuation, right? Okay, um, I love I, I love the initial balance, right? The first hour of the trading session, the high, low, um, you know, I look on the 30 minute time frame. If we see a, a rejection up at the IB high um, and we come back into it and close into it, I love taking a short. Um, I, I've seen that to be a high probability trade for me. And then obviously the reverse for the IB low, uh, where we, if we break below the IB low, but then come back into it and close above the low um, on the 30 minute, then I would take the, look, the, take the position long. Um, that's been a go-to strategy for me and something that I've really uh, actually learned it from uh, Hogue on, on top really? of that. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, ever since I heard him talk about it, I, I started trying it and it just became a strategy that was, it worked for me. And so I've used it ever since. So the initial balance for everybody that doesn't know is the first hour of trading, correct? 9.30 mm -hmm. to 10.30 yep. Eastern time. Yep. So you set a high and a low and you're using those as kind of like your range for the day where you'll look for reversals off of that range. Will you ever will. Like, look for break and retest or continuation off of those levels too? I will look for continuation. Yeah, if I see, if we have a strong uh, con uh, continuation, whether it be above or, or below the low or high, right? Uh, if we yep. have a continuation above the high, I'll take I'll take it long. Um, obviously, you can usually see a pretty strong trend if we break above that IB high and we have continuation you can kind of feel the the, the buying pressure there and so that's where I'll look to take along if, if that'd be the case are you doing anything with like the Dom or with an order flow or anything like that mm -hmm. yeah so I use I use bookmap um okay, I, nice. I'm a big, I'm a, yeah I'm a big fan of bookmap to uh, see where orders are sitting resting orders um with stop orders so, you know bookmap has been a, a really good tool in my in my trading more looking at stop orders and looking at levels rather than looking yeah. at entries though for book map, not so much like yeah. for the entry itself. Right. Yeah. I like to see where orders are sitting. Like where, where are people placing their orders where they want to you know have a transaction at? Have you noticed, I mean, you trade NASDAQ, I trade ES on ES over the last couple of days started last week, like 150 points below us or above us. There's like 3000 something orders sitting there. What is that? Do you have any idea? Cause I don't know what that is. I, to be honest, I couldn't tell you. Um, I it's have weird. seen those. That's yeah, what it is. Have, it's weird. It is very weird. I have seen that before. Um, I, I it feels it feels very fake to me because right. I, I see I see a lot of them. Uh, they'll just disappear, right? They'll be sitting down there, but then they'll just they'll be gone, right? Randomly, so, yes. Randomly, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so I, yeah, I couldn't tell you what they are. Honestly. So with that, that kind of ties into my next question. What's your opinion on like news events? Because I know that right now. Sure. CPI has become a very hot topic. Inflation, mm -hmm. interest rates are very much talked about. Are you trading through these news events or because the time of day that you're looking to trade is kind of after, I feel like, some of the news events, right? If you're waiting for the first hour of the trading session to go before you're looking for a trade, the news has kind of already passed for the most part, happened. right? Yep. yep. Yeah, it's happened. I try to stay out of news. Um, I, you know, early when I first got into trading, I've been wrecked by news so many times that I learned my lesson to just stay out of it. <laughs> Yeah. And so, yeah. And so I usually let news pass. Um, if I'm trading on a big news day, like say CPI, um, you know, I'm, I am sized down. I am not going to be in an overly leveraged. I'm trading very, very small. How do you handle the midday lull? Cause if you wait the first hour, yeah. I was always taught that like by lunchtime, one o'clock, it starts to slow down. If you're taking the trade at 11, does that give you just an hour? Like what's the average hold time for your trade? Or are you just kind of rocking it to power hour? How do you view that? Yeah, so a lot of my trades can be very, very quick. Um, you know, they can be 5, 10, 15 minute trades. Got it. So, um, you know, I usually see I'm central time. So a lot of uh, the volatility, you know, the lull kind of happens around 11 o'clock my time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, anywhere from, I usually see volatility till, you know, about 1030 is when after 1030 is when it really starts to die down. Um, and so I will, and that's central time. So I, you know, I'll try to take a trade if there's an opportunity presented um, somewhere in that, in that time frame. No, I have hour. traded. Yeah. I, you know, and I have traded before the, you know, the first hour I have taken trades, you know, I, there's also strategies where I've done, you know, the 15 minute breakout um, opening range breakout. Right. And so yep. I've traded that before. Um, but the IB has really been my bread and butter. Um, so I try to take a, a trade in that time frame. And are you tracking these trades to like, how do you view journaling and tracking? Are you, are you tracking each individual setup? Are you tracking day to day? How do you like to go about that? Love journaling, love journaling. I, I journaled even before I was a trader, um, oh, you nice. know, before, yeah, like be, you know, when I, in marketing, when I'm you know, managing clients, like I, 
I have a lot on my plate. And so if I don't journal, then I'm not up to my part. Like I, something's wrong. <laughs> and yeah. so I've always journaled before I was a trader. And so that kind of carried into trading and I use Tradezilla for, for my trading stuff, for my journaling. Nice. Do you tag? One of the features I'm not using enough with Tradezilla is the tags. Like I, I try to be on it, but I'm just busy. And like, I'd like to tag each individual. Like this was a 15 minute opening range trade, or this was a initial balance trade. And then I start to see which ones I'm doing well with and which ones I'm not doing with. Do you do anything like that? I'm right there with you. I've not been very good at tagging and I need to be. I want to be though. I want yeah, to tag my I mistakes. To I want to tag yeah. all of it, but I just don't have <laughs> enough time. I don't, or at least I say I don't have enough time. You yeah. know, uh, by the time we drop this, Tradezilla will actually be pushing out a free trial. So for any of our listeners that are not on Tradezilla and sleeping under a rock, you should be able to go get a free trial for a week or five days, I think, to Tradezilla, which will be super helpful because I think, bro, people are so resistant, aren't they, to journaling? Like they don't want to mark up their losing trades, especially. And it's like, how could you look yeah. at it like that when that is where all the growth is, you know? Exactly. I think if you want it bad enough, you will. That's always what it comes down to, right? When yeah. when you've gone through this journey since 2020 and, and you went from stocks into futures, have there been any hiccups or has it been a pretty smooth road? Like how, when you tell people about your journey, how do you describe it? Rocky. Rocky. Why? <laughs> yeah. Especially in the beginning. Like, I mean, it's not, it's not always been smooth sailing, right? I mean, I think every trader goes through the ups and downs, the peaks, the valleys. Like it's, it's, it's a very seasonal thing for traders, right? And it's how, how like you can manage it to get through it, right? Whether you, if you go through that, that down slope and then you start over leveraging, trying to get it all back, you're going to blow up. But if, if you go through the down slope and you size down and just focus on, you know, just putting green on the board, right. To get through it, you're going to get out of it. Right. Um, I've had my peaks and valleys, plenty of them. Uh, you know, when I first started, when I got into futures, um, uh, it was very rocky for me. I blew account after account, after account, after account, I think. And that's a normal thing for new traders coming into futures. Um, 100%. over time, you just kind of, you adapt and you, you get used to trading the instrument that you're trading. And speaking on that, I'm a firm believer in picking one, maybe two instruments that you want to trade. Don't spread yourself across, right? I'm a firm believer in that because if you pick one or two, you really start to learn how it moves and you get used to the swings, the price action and you learn it quicker, right? And so as I stuck with the NASDAQ um, and sometimes I will in the S, but as I really stuck with the NASDAQ, I learned how it moves. I, it likes to go hunt those stops. It likes to, to make those sweeps and then continue in the direction that it was going. Like I, I learned that. And so um, you know, trading micro has allowed me to, to handle that obviously, but, um, you know, just picked with, I stick with, stuck with one thing. And from there, I just learned how it went. Are you uh stop trailing? I got some specific questions now as we get yeah, into the, sure. I got some, cause I know the audience is going to want to hear, are you a believer in uh trailing stops? Or are you a full in full out kind of guy? How do you do, how do you view trade management? So, cause we understand you're doing the micros. So when you have micros, mm -hmm. you have position size flexibility. Like you said, you can add, you can yeah. cut. So what are you doing to manage those trades? Yeah. So uh, a typical trade for me, I would say is I, I'll enter, uh, you know, four to five micros, maybe, um, sometimes three micros, depending on, on the day. Right. Um, but I'll enter a position. And then if I get confirmation that the trade is moving in my direction and I'm right in this trade and I can see that, then I'll look to scale in and scale in and scale in. Um, but then as we start to come to key levels, I'll start scaling out. Right. And then I'll leave maybe like three, two or three runners if I can. Uh, two or three micros as a runner, but then I'll trail my stop loss on those to the previous candle uh, low, right? So if it breaks below the previous candle, then it'll just take me out and I'm okay with that, right? Um, so yeah, I usually trail my stop. Do you have a daily number that you're looking to make? Do you believe in like, I'm trying to make $500 a day, this is my number? How do you view like the take profit side of it? Or is it just trade to the key uh, level, take profit at the key level? Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's very day to day, right? I, you know, if I make 500, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. I don't need any more than 500 a day. Right. So if, if that's what the market's giving me, that's what the market gave me and I'm good with that. I'm going to take it and I'm going to leave. I'm going to get off the screen. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if it's a day where it's like, I'm catching, you know, a really good trend, I'm okay with, with riding it longer and, and maybe try to make more, if I make more than 500, I make more than 500. Right. Um, but if I make 500 and I'm going to continue trading, I'm not going to allow myself, if I take another trade and it gets in the green, I'm not going to allow myself to lose less. Right. You know, you go below yeah, that five. Protect the win. I'm, yeah, you got to protect taking the win. my win. Yeah. How many trades are you usually taking per day? I want to say thank you to those of you who have seen the free futures course we put out 
just a few weeks ago. It has blown up way more than I thought it would, and I'm very appreciative of that. But if you're someone who's listening to the podcast, maybe you're a first-time listener, and you haven't seen our free futures course, it's three hours. Go download it. You will not be sorry. Not only are you going to learn some things about the futures markets that you probably don't know, but you're actually going to get the strategy with the VWAP that I use every single day. This is the same strategy I teach to our mentorship students. This is the same strategy that I show when I'm streaming on ASFX TV. There's no fluff. Read the reviews. That's what everybody says. Austin has no fluff, no BS. It's straight to the point, to the point where you probably have to watch it two or three times because I talk fast and I give you a lot of value. So if you haven't seen the course, link is in the description or go to www.wop.com slash ASFX. I appreciate all of you for checking it out. Now let's get back to the video. Max three. Yeah. I, you know, I, That's what I it sounds like. That, yeah, I aim for that one to two, one to two trades. If you can get it done in one, why not? That's yeah, what I, I mean. It's I like, got, I, dude, you, you got these people that want to catch the whole, oh, I left 70 points out there. Right. But like, did you make the money that you're trying to make to get a payout? Like the goal is payouts. No one exactly. said the goal is to catch the whole move every day. You're never you going to do that. To. You don't no. need to. Yeah. No, you don't, you don't need to. If I can, if I can make my money in one trade and get off the screen, I'm off the screen. Yeah. So when you're dealing like, as you've, when, well, when did you start creating content around your trading? Yeah. Uh, let's see. I started my YouTube channel a long time ago, but then I I, I took a break from it because I, I wasn't really like the direction that it, my YouTube channel was going. So I wasn't really passionate about it back then. Um, and then I started doing content again, end of April this year. Uh, and I, I found you know a passion for creating content again, talking trading and what I'm doing now, uh, I think has really sparked that passion. And it's it's really funny because when you put, when you, when you start posting content and you have passion behind it, you see your growth right? Your growth yeah. just, just skyrockets. And that's what I experienced. You know, I started in my YouTube channel, is still relatively small. Um, but I, you know, in April I started, I had like 600 subscribers. Um, and I started posting content that I was like really passionate about and it showed my videos. And then we, you know, we skyrocketed to over 3000 now. And so it's like, you know, you see that growth when you're, when you're passionate behind your video. And now you're going to look back on this video in a year when you're at 35,000 and you're going to be like, yeah, ah, look at that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah it, it's 100%. true. And, and yeah. you can tell when someone's passionate about it, the content oh, yeah. you you can really tell. And I think that's why it's resonating with people. And that's why you're gaining traction. You're also gaining a lot of traction on Twitter because you tweet stuff that goes, you know, not viral, so to speak of like millions of views, but like viral in the trading community of like stuff that people know are good principles, but they know they don't right. always follow. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So sure. if you've been creating content, you're, I'm sure you're well aware of some of these other people. What's your opinion of ICT? Because you mentioned some sweeps already. And that's a, I see when I think of ICT, I, or when I hear the word sweep, I think of ICT. What do you think of this? Of yeah. ICT I, so I am not an ICT trader. I, I won't, right. I, I don't, I won't claim to be, I have mixed feelings on it. I feel like a lot of the things that maybe he has taught has didn't really come from him. It's been around for some time, like the principles of it, you know? Um, and so I don't know, I have, I have a mixed feelings on, on ICT. I, I don't, I'm not going to say that his strategies don't work. Cause I mean, they clearly have made people a lot of money and they, they have worked. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to claim to be an ICT, ICT trader. Yeah. And I, I think you're hitting the nail on the head. I've sat with two guys that have been trading. Chris Katie was one of them. He's the more recent one. He's been trading futures since the pit, like since the pit started, right? Like he's yeah. an older dude and he uses the similar terminology liquidity, premiums, discounts, similar to like Hogue and some of these guys that are older, right? And I asked them, what do you think of ICT? And they go, I have no idea what that is. So I think you're spot on in saying that these principles have been there. And he, yep. you know, Michael was a guy that just put his own spin to it and his own branding to it exactly. and his own marketing. And and I, I you know, I, I said this before on the podcast, my only problem with it is the bullshit story around getting kidnapped and getting the secrets of the market told to him and then they let him go. It's like, you don't need to say that. Just give credit no. where it's due to the right people. Yeah. People would have taken you way more seriously. But I think exactly. also that, you know, marketing, that story sells, right? That's what gets us, look, we're talking about it right now, right? It so yeah, yeah it, it does have that, that appeal to it. Um, yeah. we, we see also like more and more people trying to create trading related content on the internet, uh, yeah. sometimes spreading bad ideas, like indicators oh, yeah. don't work. Have you seen any of those things that like you're, you really disagree with recently or anything that stands out to you when you think about some of these principles that people are sharing that are maybe not great advice, but they go crazy all over the internet. I have always said, be careful on the content you consume, right? Cause the internet is full of content. Like, I mean, there's tons of traders out there putting content, right? And some of it can be very misleading. Um, and I usually leave people with this, like 
you can make a ton of different strategies work, but how it suits you is a different story, right? How it fits you as a trader is a completely different story because your emotions and how you think and how you handle a position is going to be far different than how somebody else does on, on their strategy or their principles, whatever they trade, right? And so I always tell people to take content with a grain of salt and uh, really just focus on them, right? Even even people that watch my videos, like if you don't listen to me, if you, if you don't if you don't want to, like don't listen to me, please. Like do you as a trader, like focus on you. At the end of the day, what matters is you, right? But to to on the content scene as a whole, I think there's a lot of poisonous things out there that can damage people's uh, thinking around trading, and it's very toxic. Do you have any core principles that like you operate under with your own trading? Like you said, certain amount of trades per day. I trade just NASDAQ, which I, I really like that point you made. I think people might have missed it where you said focus on one asset, really lock in on one thing yeah. and become good at it. So that would be a core principle. Do you have any that other is. ones that you could share? Um, I would say, I mean, that's that's a huge one, right? Focus on one thing and and get really good at it. You know, don't spread yourself too thin. Um yeah. but at the at the end of the day, it's like I'm a firm I just take, take your time. The markets are here forever. I understand we aren't here forever, but the markets are here forever, right? You have all the time in the world to get good at trading and to, uh, to, to make money. Don't feel like you have to make it in a week, a month, even a year, right? Think about if you just, if you just made small base hits for an entire year, how much money would that equate, right? It'd be, you do, do very well. Um, as long as you manage risk and your stop losses, of course. Right. But, um, just take your time. I mean, that's, that's really the, the principle I, I, I will live by with trading. There is no rush in this industry. Why do you think then it doesn't make sense for a lot of new guys to copy trade? Because you've said that already, that that's like the shiny object. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you're trying yeah. to take your time, couldn't you take, I'm just playing the other side of it. Couldn't you take your time and trade slowly, but copy that to five or 10 accounts or whatever and make more money while still going slow? Couldn't somebody my question, make my Then my yeah. question to you would be, can you have longevity in one account? If you haven't right, you been know, able to prove that, you probably won't. Exactly. If, if you can't hold one account, then you can't hold five. You can't hold 10. You can't hold 20. Right. I would focus on, you know, being a good trader and finding your footing with trading before you start trying to scale into all these other accounts. That's just my opinion. Yeah. It's, it is a good, a very valid point. What do you think about trading books? Because you mentioned that you've learned a little bit from Hogue and Top Step TV guys, I'm sure have helped you a lot. But what about any trading books? Anything that you could like recommend that stands out to you? Uh, yeah, uh, Market Profile. Um, I love that uh, that book, The Best Loser Wins. That's yeah, a really Tom, good book. Everybody's on yeah. that book this year. Yeah, it's a good yep, book. That's a, that's a really great book. Um, let's see. I just bought Trading in the Zone. I haven't read it yet, but I'm fixing to start diving into it as well. It's one of those books, bro. Like when I, when people would talk about that book, it'd be like, it's everyone is recommending. So I don't even want to read it. But then when I finally got into it, it was like, oh, I get it now. Cause it's just, it's got so many of those like time tested truths in trading mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. And I think, uh, my, this is just my opinion. I think some of Mark Douglas's lectures on YouTube are actually better than that book. Like he has really? these hour long videos that are, if you just type in Mark Douglas seminar on YouTube, you'll see there's like eight, 10, 15 of them. They're mm -hmm. awesome. And I think they're better because he's like really in, in front of people kind of grilling them up, like similar to what I've done in my own seminar. So it's like the same kind of yeah. attitude that it's like, it's like, what do you mean you would do this here? Why would you do this? So it's like, you get a little more animated version of him. where like, I'm also just not a big book guy, bro. It's just not my thing. Yeah. I'm right there with you. I, I'm not a huge book guy. I, I I'm trying to be. I really yeah. am. I'm putting, I'm yeah. putting a lot of my effort into, into being a book guy and just sitting down and just in reading. I just, yeah, it, it's, it's definitely tough for me too, but trying. <laughs> what do you like doing off the charts? Uh, man, I'm a family dude. I'm a dad. I have a son. Um, nice. so it's, I, yeah, I, I, as much time as I can spend with him. That's, that's How old is he? eight months. Nice. All right. So my son's 13 months or a little, almost 14 months, dude. Wait till he's th when you start being able to push him around and shit and throw him around a little bit, yes. bro. He's yeah. he's a he's a savage. My kid's a savage, bro. And it's so cool because now like I come down the steps because my office is upstairs and I'll he'll hear me coming down and he'll be like, huh? And he'll know I'm coming downstairs and like that's the best, bro. It's the best. I get it now. Like the whole first yeah. year, you, you you've gone through it too. They need the white the, the mom. They need their mom. Yeah. They don't need you yeah. or me. Like we're right. we're we're obsolete. They don't even know who we are. But now Mommy he's is priority. You, Yep. But eight months, he's starting to pay attention a little more. He definitely knows who you are now. Yep. Oh yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. And he, he's so fun and he's, a, he's an easy baby too. He loves going places. Like he, he goes just to hang out. He'll, he won't cry nothing. Like the only thing he, that my I said to him is this bottle. Yeah. That, that, yeah, what, yeah. That's it. 
that's it. That's it. Yeah. So I think that's, that's awesome off the charts with the family stuff. Yeah. And I think also I was going to assume you would say content. Like, it seems like you actually, like you said, you're passionate about it. You enjoy creating content do, to yeah. help other traders. Do you yep. feel like when you make the content, it actually makes you a better trader too? It does. Like you're learning yeah, and, and like, yeah, when I'm, when I'm talking out loud and, you know, from like experiences where my trading or my thoughts, my mentality around trading, it's just, it's not, it's not only for, you know, them, but it's also a reminder to myself that, yeah. you know, yeah. this is where I'm at with trading. This is my thoughts, this is my opinions, this is where I think, this is how I think. Um, it's, it's also a reminder for myself too. Who's your uh, favorite Top Step TV host? Of course you love them all, but who, who other than, yeah. you mentioned Hogue already. I asked Deanna this earlier this week. I did a podcast with Deanna and I'll, I'll tell you her answer after, uh, after you give an answer. Okay. Uh, favorite host. Um, I had Dolby's funny, man. He is funny, bro. Dolby is funny, a funny bro. guy. Yeah. Dolby's very funny. I want to say Dolby just because how okay. funny he is. She yeah. said Hogue. Deanna said Hogue. So that's oh, good. We okay. give some Dolby, Dolby some love too. That's good. Yeah. I mean, we got to Dolby some love. Everybody's cool. I mean, it's a, it's a cool platform because you get to learn from so many different people. And actually, today I'm sitting down with Eddie, and all I'm going to oh, talk cool. to Eddie about is smoking cigarettes in the pit, and if he's got any cool stories from his days in the pit. That's oh, that sure really gets some. me excited, dude. Is like hearing yeah. about being on the floor and yelling at each other. And I sat with this guy Josh. He told me a story about some guy was like just bleeding in a position, just and he wouldn't exit maybe it was mp that told me the story i think it was and then he stabbed himself the dude on the floor stabs himself in the arm with a pen his clerk pulls the pen out and blood starts squirting everywhere i also heard a story about a dude who had a heart attack on the floor and they just left him there on the ground and they were walking over him to still finish the trading day so i'm oh, excited no, no. to talk to eddie i think those stories will be really interesting yeah that's gonna be good that's gonna be a great interview that's gonna be a great yeah. one yeah um influences as we get to the end of our question and answer here, I really appreciate you hitting these fast for me. I think uh, everybody will really appreciate that. Any major influences? You're not an ICT guy, not too many books to name. Mentioned Hogue, mentioned Top Step. Anything else that you could mention for some of the newer listeners maybe trying to get into futures and just can't you know, feel a lot like they've made a lot of confidence, a lot of progress, who you would recommend, yeah. of course, other than yourself and other than, you know. Right, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, So this is going to be kind of a different answer than you, what you might expect, but... um. I've taken a step back from influences, influencers, like I, I have, and I really have just focused on myself. And so I would say the biggest learning experience for anybody getting into trading would just be in front of the charts, right? Yeah. Focus on trading, just get the screen time in. That's going to be your biggest influencer is just the charts and, and, and journaling in and journaling. Yeah. yeah. And journaling. I, I think, you know, it's one thing to learn from somebody and to learn from other people, but it's another thing to execute, right? And so I think if you just learn the basic foundations, you know, of, of trading, whether it be like supply and demand or support and resistance, things like that, and just focus on the foundational level of things and just put in the screen time and trade, I think that would be your biggest teacher. Why are you stepping away from influencers, if you don't mind me asking? You well, know I I'm going to ask. Step, yeah, I, I know that, yeah. I wouldn't say stepping away from influencers. I would say I would stop, really stop paying that much attention. Well, right? I get that 100% because I don't yeah. pay attention to a lot of people yeah. either. You're busy creating content and doing it exactly. yourself. Why would you be listening yeah. to people? Yeah. I think it's more so like I'm just trying to stay in my lane, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So NQ focused, one to three trades a day, not over risking, trading micros. Those would be three things that I took out of the way that you approach this. Initial balance is a big deal. I'm just trying yeah, to think, of, are there any other key principles that you operate under? Because I think that's what people try to get out of these conversations is like, okay, yeah. what am I doing that he's doing differently? Mm -hmm. uh, don't add to, don't keep adding to a losing position. Uh, that's a, that's a huge that's one, a good right? One. Yeah, it's a huge one. I mean, it's very easy to be like, you know, get into a trade and it run against you. Mass will be like, oh, it, it's, it's got to come back. It's going to come back. I'm going to add here just to get a better uh, average price and get closer to that, to that where price is. And then it keeps going down further. And then you triple down on that loss. And then next thing you know, that account's gone. Cool. Right. Yeah. Don't add to a losing position. If you're going to add to a losing position, at least let it be into like in a zone or a range that you're adding to where it's maybe accumulating inside of, but not trending completely against you. I agree with that. Well, and especially like it's weird. Apex has that rule where you can't 
add to losers, right? Or they will not pay you out, right. which yep. I see from their perspective, they're allowed to make whatever rules they want. But I also yep. see the argument of like, well, I want to build into a position at a zone or at a level, like you're saying, and you should have the ability to do so. That's part you of should. trading with micros, you know, because you can is. get yourself in at a really good price then and build into something you have conviction in. Then it's about mm -hmm. seeing the conviction. Because then like you're saying, if you're just adding to a loser, there's no conviction. That's not part of your plan. You're just trying to make the money back. You're trading the P&L. You're trading off emotions. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have to touch on combines versus XFAs since you're a top yeah. step guy. So talk to mm -hmm. us about your approach to passing combines. Do you go hard, try to pass them quickly? Do you trade them the same as your funded accounts? What's your opinion on that? Uh, it's been 50-50. Uh, I've, I've, I have taken combines slow and steady to try to just mm -hmm. focus on being a good trader. Then there's been combines mm -hmm. where I've really tried to rush the process and I've I've scaled uh, scaled up into positions, right? Um, I would say that if I had to give advice on it, I would say take your time in combines, right? Because I mean, I feel like especially some of the newer traders, they're going to, how they trade their combines, they're, they're probably going to trade their XFAs. Right, especially for the newer traders. Um, so I would say, really, just take your time. If you're a, if you're a seasoned trader, like and you you've been trading combines and XFAs for some time, and you get it, I think it's okay for you to size up and to to try to get through those combines quickly and then get in that XFA. Uh, but for newer traders, I definitely recommend just taking your time. Well, especially if you're a new guy and you like you said you haven't passed, and then you try to go through them. How much money are you going to be really willing to throw at this before you've even taken a single payout? It's one thing exactly. if you're up two yeah. or three thousand dollars in payouts and you want to spend a thousand dollars to buy some combines and try to go hard at them. I, I recommend, like you're saying, try to take some money out of it first. You know, get a, get yeah. that first five hundred dollar thousand dollar payout. You know, and kind of go from there. And then talk to me about combine uh, XFAs, funded accounts. Are you like this daily risk number of like I'm not going to lose this much per day? Like, how do you approach defensively keeping those XFAs? Yeah, so that's that's a great question. So I really, you know, my average P and L on a like say like an average day, 400, 500 bucks in an XFA. I'm not gonna lose more than that on a losing day. Um, you know, if I I don't want to make 500 one day and then lose 800 to a thousand the next. You know what I mean? Right. I don't want to take one step forward, two steps back. Um, I want to you know maintain you know my profits as best as I can. So. Um, you know, average day four to five hundred dollars in profit. Uh, so I'll try to keep my daily loss, personal loss for me, uh, around that same same area. Do you find that you end up favoring longs or shorts when you're trading Nasdaq? Are you a bias guy? Yeah, at all? Uh, I've noticed my strong. Uh, I lean more towards shorting. Yeah, I, I lean more towards shorting. I, for whatever reason, I have found that shorting's been. Uh, I guess I could say more fun for me. <laughs> I guess yeah. you can put it that way. You well, know, when you're trading um, the indices, they slide hard when they move they down. Do. So if you yeah. do catch a good short, you make a lot of money potentially. It's elevators right? down, you know. Elevators so down, stairs up, uh, elevators down. Yep. Yeah, and so you catch a short, you know, you typically catch a pretty good trade, right? But if you end up trying too many shorts, you end up burnt out on the long side, where yeah. it just starts grinding you higher yeah. all day. Yeah. Yeah. Something I, I when I was watching Toss Dakota actually Coach Dakota on Top Step, he yeah. said something yeah. I really resonated with and I really appreciated. Um, and it was the markets uh, need a reason to go down. They don't need a reason to go up. Yep. And uh, that, you need a that catalyst. Is, yeah, that hit it right on the head, man. And so shorting can get dangerous when there's no reason for it to, to go down. It's probably going to continue up. I'm going to guess 70% of the listeners agreed with what you said. They're like, yeah, I favor the shorts. But if you looked at like where the easier money is, it's probably in the longs. If you're an it indice is. trader. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, I'm like, they don't need a reason to go up. They can just go up for absolutely no reason. Well, the all, reason you know? is it's it's like never ending because it's the yeah. inflows of capital from all over the world. You got people in China and India that want to invest in American markets, so it's going to push markets higher. You know what I mean? It's not going to send markets lower. Yeah, so it's an interesting dynamic for us to be as day traders where we want to be flexible, excuse me, to both sides of the market, but you know there's one side. Yeah, Dakota's a great trader. I actually asked him to come on the podcast. You know what he told me? He said, let me figure out my trading out a little bit more, and I'll come on at the end of the summer. Well, we're getting to the end of the summer, Dakota, so I'm ready for the interview. <laughs> and you know what's funny is like the dude takes out $100,000 from Top Step and says, let me figure out more about my trading. Out. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting guy. You know, that takes an interesting huge. mindset. That's huge. Yeah, yeah it shows you where huge. he's really focused. Like Super it's, humble. Super humble. Yep. 
Yep. And that's why I like him. I like a lot of the guys on top step because they, uh, they definitely are humble. And I think anyone with experience, like even yourself, you don't come off as a very braggadocious guy. I could tell you and I are similar where if we got to talk shit, we'll talk shit, but yeah. it's not going to be yeah. the first way we're, we're going to go because right. the markets will punch you in the face. The second you start acting like yeah, that, you can't yeah. act like, yeah, yeah. Markets don't care about your feelings. <laughs> Joey, they definitely don't bro. But I think our listeners will really care about your feelings and the way that you've shared your insights today. So I think this has been a great conversation. Any last minute closing thoughts before I let you go? I really appreciate this, by the way. But yeah, for already. sure. I mean, like, you know, just for the, I would say just for the newer chairs, like just to reemphasize, like just take your time. There is no rush. I mean, these, like, like I said before, these markets are here forever. So you, you know, if you have another job and their source of income, you know, it's okay to take small base hits in trading and let them pile over time versus trying to make hundred thousand dollars in one month right just take take your time with it um it, it's gonna be here it's gonna be here tomorrow it's gonna be here in, in a year two years five years ten years it's gonna be here so just take your time take your time nice and slow everybody that's the advice from mr joey morgan everybody make sure you follow joey i'm gonna have his twitter joey you on instagram i don't think we're connected on instagram uh yeah i am on instagram uh, it's okay. just, I, I'm I'll make sure I get that link. Yeah. Cool. We'll yeah. get that. We'll put the YouTube channel. Any other links you want me to send them to or is social good? Social's good. Uh, really, probably just the YouTube. You can see cool. YouTube, Twitter if you want. Cool. Perfect. For now, everybody, we'll put a pin in it. If you guys have any questions for Joey, make sure you hit the comments down below. If we do a part two, I'll make sure we reference those questions. But I think you'll get a ton of information about Joey and the way that he trades if you just follow him on Twitter and you check out the YouTube channel like I did. So, Joey, thank you very much, man. Really appreciate awesome. this. Pleasure. Yeah, absolutely, man. Best of luck with your trading this week. Listeners, thank you guys very much. Make sure you're subscribed and we'll see everybody in the next episode.